Hi everybody, my name is Herminia and I will be playing the role of a domestic violence counselor and I will be interviewing Talia who is coming in voluntarily because she is being um, abused by her boyfriend. Our initial interview will be taking place in my office and Talia is coming in voluntarily. Come in. Come in. Hello. Hi, my name is Edmina. Nice to meet you. I'm Talia. Nice to meet you too. Um, would you like anything to drink or anything? Um, no, I'm fine for okay. right now. Okay, so um, let's get started. So I know that this is your first interview. So before we get started, I just want to let you know that um, kind of explain a little bit about what the paperwork you signed in before you came into the office. So basically it just states that anything you tell me, anything you say, is always going to stay here between us. Um, I am a mandated reporter, however, so if you, if I feel like you're a danger to yourself or to others, then that's when I'm obligated by law to report to the police in case like you tell me you want to hurt yourself or your husband or anybody. That's the only time that I'm mandated to report. But other than that, everything you tell me is going to stay in this office. Okay. That's so, um, what brings you here today? Um, I have a problem with my husband. Your husband? Yeah. Um, how so? Um, well, it's kind of hard to say because I'm really embarrassed and of the scenario. But um, he physically and emotionally abuses me. Um, more than twice a day and I'm here now because it's to the point where I've been put in the hospital for so I'm just really concerned about my um, myself so that's why I'm here today. Well first of all I want to let you know that you're a very brave person for coming in. Um, a lot of people go through this and they kind of they're embarrassed like you said to come but you're doing great by taking the first step and coming in today. So I'm really happy that you decided to come in today. Thank you. Um, so you want to tell me a little bit about how... So you want to tell me a little bit about how your relationship turned violent? Uh, so we've been married for about five years now and the emotional abuse and verbal abuse started mm -hmm. maybe a year or two after, after we got married. and. It was just little things, you know, um, making his lunch for work, he would always come back disappointed, yelling because I did something wrong with it, or just things that I had to like tippy-toe around him, you know, in order for him not to get mad at me. Um, and then it started being, oh, you can't have a job, oh, you have to stay here, um, I had no money, there was a certain point where like, I had to be asking him to do things, it was just stuff like that that was that led up to the physical abuse, you know, so um, the physical abuse started maybe a year ago and I didn't want to go to the police because I love him, you know, and, and that's the only reason why I'm staying, but now I fear for my life, so that, so yeah. So what I hear you saying is that first it kind of started off in like a low-key abuse by him just telling me you did things wrong and stuff. And how did that make you feel when he would tell you, you know, like, you did my lunch wrong? Or um, It made me feel really low, you know, like I've never been put down so bad in my life. And it's like, why would you do that to me? If you married me, like, why would you put me down for little things like that? You know, and it, it put me in a place where I isolated myself. You know, I didn't want to speak to my family. I didn't want to speak to my friends because I thought... I was the bad person, you know, because, like, if I was doing the right things, then he wouldn't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I put myself down for that. And now, going back to your family, do you have some kind of support system other than your husband? Um, I actually stopped speaking to my family because my husband wouldn't let me go out. He wouldn't let me see my friends or my family. So I don't have any contact with them right now and it's been about maybe a year and a half already since the physical abuse has started so um, I haven't been able to talk to them. And when you say physical abuse do you mean he, what do you mean by that? 
he hits me, he kicks me, he punches me, and that's about it. It's just everything that you can think of, he does. And on a scale of one being it's it's everything's great to ten being it's horrible, what do you consider your relationship to be at right now? Um, a ten. A ten? Yeah. And have you tried any methods with your husband to say save your relationship? Um, he doesn't think we have a problem in a relationship. He thinks that everything's fine because I'm always doing what he wants me to do, you know, and it's like I have no say in anything. So he truly believes that our relationship is fine, even though he knows he does the wrong things to me. Mm -hmm. In his eyes, it's the right thing. And I don't know what to do about that. And um, what would you like to do? What would you like to get out of these sessions? Um, according to your insurance, because that's what we're going by, um, it says that we have a total of 10 sessions. So what we can do is, you know, we can meet every week, every other week, depending on how you feel. Um, I think because I would like to meet um, at least every week. Every week? Yeah. Okay, that works. So in these sessions, what would you like to for me to help you? What do you want to get out? Um, what I want to get out is to have the courage and stability to get out of my relationship because I know for a fact that things will not change between us due to the fact that he's not willing to work things out with me. So it's just really hard for me right now because I have no job, no money, no family to go to. And that's my main concern right now is leaving him when he's my financial stability. Okay, um, so what I hear you saying is that basically he has you tied because you don't have a job and you don't have contact with your family. Um, have you ever had a job in the past before? Um, yeah, I did after school programs with children. I really enjoy working with children. Um, just things like that. I've worked at Chipotle for a few years and yeah. Okay. Um, so would you like to contact your family again? Yes, I would love that. It's just they did not agree with my marriage because they felt that he was not good enough for me and um, for some reason I didn't listen to them and now I know why. I don't know how they saw it before me mm -hmm. but now I understand the reasons why. But um, I would really love to contact, get contact with my family. And um, would you like to contact them anytime soon or after you kind of get on your feet for a little bit? I think I want to contact them after I get on my feet because I don't want it to seem like I need them for me to get out of the relationship because they're the reason they didn't want to talk to me mm -hmm. because of my relationship and it was it was like to a two-way street it was both of our decisions but I want to be able to get on my feet before I speak with them so it can be clean slate him not being in the picture anymore okay. that's what I really want okay so um if we were to have a list of the things you wanted to accomplish in the next few weeks the first one would be get a job Mm -hmm. And then the second, would you like to, you know, start, you know, dating somebody else or? Um, as of right now, I just want to think about myself, mm -hmm. not others, because I feel like maybe everybody's like that. You know, you never mm -hmm. know. Like, I thought my husband was the right man for me, the one that was going to give me everything mm -hmm. and treat me right. And um, I just need time. Okay. That is far okay. from right. So what we're going to do is that, um, do you have a resume or anything like that? Oh um, yeah, I have a resume. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to send me a, a copy of your resume through okay. email. And I'm going to see what I can do. I'm going to look for listings with people that I know since you said you've worked with children before. Okay. We're going to look for you to start getting a job. Maybe we can't get you a job. We can get you to volunteer at a school. Maybe, you know, you can go read to children, volunteer at a library when working with kids. And then um, from there, we'll go and okay. see how things are. If you are you gonna go back to your husband right now or are you staying somewhere else? I don't have anywhere to stay. 
that's the thing like i'm have to go back he actually doesn't know i'm here um supposedly supposed to be at the grocery store right now but i have nowhere to go and that's my main other main concern do you want me to refer to you to the women's shelter you know it's probably not what you're used to but i mean that's somewhere safe that you would yeah you, okay. i think that would be really great okay so um let me go get that information for you so let me contact my friends at the women's shelter and i will be with that okay so i just got back from speaking at the women's shelter and um here's a, a little bit about what they do and they're more than happy to take you in the one rule that they wanted you to know is that as of now you can't have any contact with your husband mm -hmm. and that goal is basically to protect you and other people at the shelter nobody's gonna know that you're there and you know um if you want i'm more than happy to go with you and drop you off at this place okay i have one question okay. about um how long will i be able to stay here well the shelter it's a, a woman shelter so um, there you can stay, I believe, for anywhere up to four weeks. Okay. Um, they, they provide you with housing and a meal, but um, they do try to get you out as fast as you can okay. because of the demand that people, you know, need to be there for. Also, they'll be able to help you with work. After you find yourself a job, we can contact your family so you can regain the contact that you lost over the years with them. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so let's go. Okay. And I'll see you next week. Okay, thank okay. you. <laughs> so I just finished doing my interview with Talia. And the things that I did really good, I feel, were that I used a lot of non-judgmental, empathic attitude towards her. Um, when she came in, I... I didn't judge her. I actually asked her if she wanted anything to drink, which was just to make her feel comfortable. Um, also, throughout her interview, I was, you know, nodding and telling her words of encouragement for coming into the office. Um, the things I feel that I could have used to improve were that I could have probably used more reflection about how she felt about her relationship. And, um, also, I could have probably paraphrased and summarized a little more when she was talking about her problems. And then the approach that I had with her was a non-direct approach because when she came in for her interview, I didn't give her a framework of how our interview was going to go. It was just her talking and I kind of adapted to what she was telling me. And also, um, I use scaling when I asked her the the kind of relationship she had, one being amazing, 10 being it was really bad. And I also gave her suggestions about what she could do. For instance, um, going to the women's shelter and contacting her family and looking for a job. And I think overall, I would give myself a grade of a three.